Guys, we're back, and this is episode two of our little three-part series. Again, this is my good friend, lifelong friend, Tyler Denham. And on the first video, we made some backcountry protein balls and mountain mush. Today, we're dehydrating your own food. And I feel like this is the one video that um, we did it because we wanted to help people not be intimidated. We also believe that making your own food is a better option for performance, for recovery, for health reasons, and it's just kind of cool to be self-sufficient. So Tyler, what, what's on the menu today? Uh, we got quinoa spaghetti and uh, roast vegetable potato mix. Yep, so Tyler's gonna be the main guy. We're gonna, I filmed most of this. He did most of the cooking, if you will, and uh, we're gonna just <laughs> take you along on how to do it from start to finish, and then when you're done watching this, you're gonna go give it a shot yourself. Hello, my name is Tyler Denham, and I'm going to show you how I prepare quinoa spaghetti and dehydrate it for a backcountry meal. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is make my quinoa. Uh, I'm going to boil four cups of water with two cups dry quinoa. You're going to bring that to a boil. Once it boils, you're going to turn it down to a simmer and simmer it for 15 minutes. While that's going, I'm going to brown my hamburger. Uh, today we're using Bear Burger from a Bear I killed in like 2019. We're waiting for that to boil. I'm going to brown my hamburger and I'm going to, as I brown it, once it starts to cook, I'm going to add uh, some granulated garlic organic no salt seasoning, uh, Italian seasoning, and salt. This is actually uh, Himalayan pink salt, uh, sea salt. So this recipe will work with any um, spaghetti sauce, however you like to cook it, and then any spaghetti noodles. Um, when you're dehydrating, it's better to use a very fine noodle, like an angel hair noodle. Um, I'm using the quinoa, uh, just straight up quinoa, uh, because when you re go to reconstitute it in the back country, it'll reconstitute better when it's in that smaller form. Um, so that's why I'm just using plain uh, quinoa for this recipe today. Okay, once your hamburger's all brown, I just add the marinara sauce to it. This is just organic marinara sauce from Costco. So now I'm just gonna let this simmer until the quinoa is done. Okay, our quinoa is done. That's what it should look like when it's done. Nice and fluffy. We're gonna dump this quinoa into the bowl. And we're gonna dump the spaghetti sauce in the bowl. And then mix it up good. Now that you have your quinoa and spaghetti sauce mixed in your mixing bowl, you're gonna wanna test it and make sure it tastes the way you like it. Uh, once it tastes satisfactory, we're gonna, I'm going to show you how I put it on the dehydrator and dehydrate it. So I just have one of these cheap Nesco dehydrators. Um, it doesn't have a timer on it, uh, so there are a lot better ones out there, but this is what I have and it works, so I'm going to keep using it until it breaks. Anyway, it's a Nesco. Um, I'll be dehydrating on 160 degrees and they just come in these little round trays that stack on top of each other and I'll show you how I do it. So um, I'm just going to f take this, this was uh, a bowl that I would normally use for eating at home uh, and I'm just going to take the spaghetti mixture and fill this bowl up to maybe a little bit more full than I would at home. And then we're going to 
spread that out on one of these trays and it should all fit on one tray. And then I want to spread it out as much as I can. The thinner the better, so if you have a bigger dehydrator that would probably work better. If this is what I have, it'll just take a little extra time to dehydrate this all. So, got it just like that. And we're going to do the same for the next tray. Okay, once I have it all all the trays filled up and everything set, ready to go in, on the trays. I'm gonna set it at 160 degrees, which is as high as this is gonna go. Um, I will time it and let you know, and I'll show you what I do with it after it's all dehydrated. Our food's been uh, dehydrating in our dehydrator for 12 hours. I turned it off and then let it cool down so that when we put them into our bags, they don't, they're not hot. Uh, that can sometimes cause moisture to accumulate inside the bags. So again, we put this in here, ran it for 12 hours at 160 degrees. Um, I did have to, these trays, you have to switch them around so the bottom one is on top and the top one ends up on the bottom uh, when you're doing these sometimes uh, just to get a more heat even heat distribution um, these are mylar bags that i got off of amazon and i accidentally ordered the wrong ones so they're just flat baggies i usually get the ones that on the bottom they kind of puff out so they'll stand up when you when you fill them up with hot water they'll stand up so i'm just gonna have to deal with it and lean it up against something when i'm out in the back country but these are the ones i have so that's what i'm going to use and then you do want it to as you put this in here and i'm going to try and fit this entire tray into one bag because that's what i decided was a a proper meal size when I put it in there and then I'm just gonna crunch everything down into small pieces as I put it in here um, the smaller the, the chunks the easier and um, more evenly it rehydrates so you want it nice and small So, there you go. That'll be one meal that I'll rehydrate out in the woods uh, while I'm hunting this fall. So this is um, elk roast. I just cooked it up in the crock pot until you can easily pull it apart. And we're just going to pull it apart nice and small pieces and put it on our tray. So once we got all of our meat laid down on our tray, we're going to cover it up and dehydrate it on 160 for about 12 hours. All right, we're going to dehydrate the, some vegetables to put in our vegetable roast potato meal. Um, I just have green beans, corn, and peas here. 
And the first thing you gotta do is crack them open and drain the water out. And the more of the water you get out, the faster they'll dehydrate. Once they're drained, we just spread them out on our dehydrator sheet. And you want them as thin as possible. You don't have to worry too much about it, but the thinner, the more evenly they're spread out, the better they'll dehydrate. These vegetables have been in here for 10 hours. Um, I did it overnight, turned it off, let them cool off. This is what they look like when you pull it out. This was the corn. These are the green beans. They were more spread out and then peas. And we're just going to take them all and put them into a baggie so we can mix them up. But this is an entire can of green beans dehydrated. And you want to make sure they, they're de dehydrated all the way, not partially. So it may, depending on your dehydrator and a bunch of other factors, humidity, heat, it may take longer, it may take less time. All right, so that's, we'll just mix those together and then we're gonna put it, um, put our meal together once we get all the components dehydrated. Okay, so we cooked our roast, we put it on here at 160 degrees for 10 hours. Uh, and this is what it looks like when it's all done. And you want it to be really dehydrated, so when it, you break it apart, it just kind of falls apart like that. And that's how you can know it's done. Like I said, if, depending on your dehydrator and the conditions in which you're dehydrating, it could, could vary a little bit. Um, so then we just take that, take it off here, um, and we're gonna put it again in a bowl separately. Uh, and this we're gonna put aside, and we'll show you how we mix it all together with the potatoes. Um, and put it in a bag for a backcountry meal. All right, this is the roast potato vegetable meal. Um, I like these on a, whatever, Honest Health. I got them at Costco. There's nothing but um, potatoes, butter, sea salt, period. That's why I use those ones. Basically, you're going to take your roast that you dehydrated when you measure it out you're going to crumble it up as much as you can because the little tiny pieces rehydrate better in the meal than big pieces so in our bag we're going to put a cup of the potatoes half cup of the meat and you can do this with whatever dehydrated meat you want and then a third cup of the dehydrated vegetables we did. And then just because I want to, I'm going to add a tablespoon of some seasonings. This is the sweet mesquite. Uh, most of the time I'll do the no salt seasoning from Costco. Um, but this is what we have. So that's what we're going to do. It's, it looks like it's in an extra big bag, but that's by design because when you rehydrate the potatoes, they really expand. And so if you don't have a big bag to put them in, um, like this will expand and almost fill up this bag, probably three quarters of the bag. So that's, it packs down really light, but you do want a little bigger bag to put it in for when you rehydrate it. 
All right, guys, so hopefully you enjoyed that <laughs> asset of just learning how to dehydrate. Uh, how many times have you dehydrated your own food? I've been doing it primarily for the last two seasons. Two seasons. So this is my first season of doing it. I have 20 meals right here. I've got 10 more to make. So I'm going to go with the quinoa spaghetti. It'll be an elk burger. It'll be quinoa noodles, um, some sort of red sauce, and I'm going to add veggies on top of that. The one thing that was surprising to me was to see how a can of vegetables literally got dehydrated down to like <laughs> nothing in the palm of your hand yep that was super surprising but it's going to be delicious one tidbit to to note is if you do an entire batch please test one of them before you put it in the mylar like put it in a mylar bag boil some water and test it you could tell that you Definitely. probably maybe screwed up last year or year before when you put potatoes in a small bag and it probably yep. blew up yeah i had <laughs> I had trouble, I'd have to like rehydrate half of it, eat it, and then rehydrate oh. the other half. And when you're hunting, you just want to, <laughs> 10 minutes to go by and to eat and be in bed after you brush your teeth or what, send your wife an in reach that, hey, Definitely. I'm alive. So check this video out and uh, look for the next one. We're going to go through kind of calculating calorie requirement for the backcountry and pre-packaging your food. This will be your last video. The last thing I wanted to say is I don't have a fancy dehydrator. I have like a $150 Cabela's dehydrator. What do you have? A uh, cheap brown knockoff version. And so you can look up online on how long to dehydrate, but most meals are gonna require at least probably 10 hours of dehydrating. Mm -hmm. And you have to got, you just have to babysit unless you get, what's the fancy ones that Lampers recommends? Uh, Excalibur. An Excalibur, which is like three to $400 for those. I like my Cabela's one. You like your cheapo one, yep. uh, but you do you. And uh, give it a shot, comment below. If you have a good recipe, we'd love to check it out. We'll catch you on the next one.